Hello everyone. In this video, I'll explain the different services and components used in hub and spoke model of enterprise scale lending zone. So starting with what is enterprise scale lending zone? So it's an environment which follows all the design principles of cloud adoption framework. And as the name suggests, you can start small and even scale it at an enterprise level. Basically, enterprise scale lending zone is a multi subscription setup where we'll use the hub and spoke architecture to design the network. And once we have the baseline network architecture, security, as well as the governance in place, we'll start deploying the business resources in the environment. To explain all the services and the components of the hub and spoke architecture, I'll use the whiteboard. So let's start. So let's start with the subscription first. We have one subscription. sub and let's call it as non-prod subscription for networking first thing you will do is deploy a virtual network so let's create a virtual network here we have deployed a vnet now let's create two subnets here so there are two subnets one is application subnet snet and database SNET. So now if you want to deploy a two tier architecture, one is application server, one VM, A, one VM, and another one is database server, D1 VM. So if you're deploying the resources in your lab, this is how you will deploy. But in the case of the corporations or different enterprises, you're not just going to create the resources directly. As I've explained, you have to first create a lending zone. But why do we need a lending zone and how do we use it? So I'll explain step by step. Now let's use another subscription for the prod. Because enterprise scale lending zone is a multi subscription model. So let's create another subscription. This is a prod subscription. Everything exactly the same prod subscription. One VNet we are deploying then two subnets, one virtual machine in one subnet, which is application subnet. So A2 VM and D2 VM. The traffic between the resources which are within a virtual network is always allowed. So that means if, if A1 wants to connect to D1, it can connect directly. And same applies to different subscription. If A2 wants to connect to D2, it can do it without any problem. Two, two different virtual networks are a different isolated environment. They cannot communicate to each other by default. So you have to set up some connection so that one virtual network can communicate to another virtual network. And it's not the case for the different subscriptions. It applies to the two different virtual network within the same subscription too. But in this case, we have two different subscriptions two different virtual networks and they can't communicate with each other. If the A1 wants to communicate to A2, it can't. If you use the private IP address to connect to each other, they cannot. So the option here is to use the VNet pairing, which can be set up between one virtual network to another virtual network. It can be within the same subscription as well as within different subscriptions too. But in an enterprise, we don't want to connect the non-prod subscription with the prod subscription directly. There should be some network filtering which should happen. Like A1 should connect to A2. However, A1 should not connect to D2. You can achieve this using the NSGs. If we'll talk about NSGs, Network Security Group. You can achieve this where you define the source and destination IP address or CIDR ranges and the source and destination port numbers. And based on that, you can do the network filtering. But if there are a lot of different subscriptions, like there are 10 non-prod subscriptions and 10 prod subscriptions for different projects, you create a different subscription. So in those cases, it will be very difficult to filter the traffic. Then there will be a lot of NSG rules to be created. Now to manage everything centrally, you need a firewall. And because firewall is a centralized piece, you need it to be in a central subscription, which is called as 
hub subscription so there is another subscription so let's call this as hub subscription now whenever you create a subscription and want to deploy the resources which requires the ip address you create a virtual network so you have created a virtual network here so vnet and then let's create one subnet which is firewall subnet and in the firewall subnet you have deployed a firewall you can deploy azure firewall or a different nvas nva is network virtual appliance so it can be palo alto firewall or fortinet firewall or checkpoint firewall so whichever suits your purpose so in this video i'll just show azure firewall so which is a managed service so you have deployed azure firewall and this is like a connectivity subscription which is a hub subscription for you so now the resources in both the subscription non prod subscription as well as prod subscription should be connecting to firewall so that means you need to create virtual network peering so virtual network peering will be created between hub subscription and the non prod subscription and same way hub subscription and the prod subscription and there will not be any direct peering among non prod subscription and prod subscription and the reason is because you want the traffic to be flowing through the firewall and not connecting the resources directly with, within the spoke subscriptions so if this is the hub subscription then automatically all the other subscriptions will become spoke subscriptions so now there is a connectivity so that means a1 vm can connect to firewall and a2 vm can connect to firewall but how will a1 vm will connect to a2 vm and for that we need two resources first is udr user defined routes so we have to create a route table where we'll define the udrs and attach the route table to the subnet and in the user defined route you define the next hop so if a1 wants to connect to a2 in that case you have to provide the private ip address of a2 and then add the next hop as the firewall so that means whenever a1 wants to connect to a2 it should go through azure firewall and now because route table is connected to the subnet so all the resources all the different virtual machines in that subnet can connect to virtual machine a2 through the azure firewall now udr is defined but by default azure firewall blocks everything so azure firewall is descriptive so you have to define if you want to allow something otherwise by default everything is denied so you have to create a firewall policy firewall policy and attach it to the firewall in the firewall policy you will define whether the traffic from a1 to a2 is allowed or not so you will provide the source ip address destination ip address and then the ports it's similar to nsg however there are certain other things which you can do in azure firewall like you can define the application rule where you can define the outbound access to the internet like which website should virtual machine can connect to and there is a third rule which is dnat rule dnat full form is destination nat so that means once you will create a rule a traffic coming from internet will use the firewall public ip address and then the netting will happen and it will connect to the virtual machine which is defined in the rule so now you have udr defined you have firewall policy defined so that means a1 can connect to a2 and this is a hub spoke model where you have connectivity defined between three different subscriptions and all the traffic filtering is being managed using the centralized azure firewall now if you have a hybrid setup like you have on prem where there are different virtual machines which are running or the different physical servers and now you want the connectivity of the resources in the different spoke subscriptions like non prod subscription and prod subscription to connect to the virtual machines which are in on prem and for that you need to create a vpn connection so there should be a vpn connection between 
hub subscription and on prem and that can be done using vpn gateway so first you create a vpn gateway and there is a firewall which is on prem because your on prem network is being managed by the on prem firewall so you create an active passive connection where you define lng local network gateway where you define the on prem firewall details and using that you create the connections and there are certain level of changes that have to be done on on prem firewall 2 as well as the internal routing so that your on prem network understand if the traffic is coming from a1 to o1 if these are two servers o1 and o2 then the, if the traffic is coming from a1 to o1 then your on prem network should be aware about that routing so in the udr you will define so if the destination is the private ip address of o1 then the next stop should be azure firewall then in the azure firewall you have to define a udr that the next hop should be vpn gateway and the vpn gateway will automatically know all the different on prem networks which are allowed because during the creation of the connection you define all those cidr ranges and then the traffic will go to the on prem firewall and on prem firewall based on the internal routing will send the traffic to o1 so a1 can connect to o1 same a2 can connect to O two or O one, anyone, based on how the firewall policy is defined, as well as different UDRs are defined, user defined routes. So now we have a hybrid hub spoke model. Now comes the centralized management of users and groups, which is through Active Directory. So in on prem, you have Active Directory domain servers (ADDS), which are part of on prem. the users which are created in on prem should log in to the azure and can work on azure environment too as they work in on prem environment and for that you need to define an ad connect so there is a connectivity between entra id and on prem active directory servers through ad connect so this will be a two way replication if the user is created in on prem active directory it will be synced to entra id and if the user is created in the entra id it will be synced to on prem active directory and on prem active directory have the dns server defined to so if you have creating a vm and they are registered to the dns server so you don't need to define the ip address every time you can just provide the name fully qualified domain name or name of the server if they are in the same forest then you can connect using the name itself but in the case of the servers or the application which are very latency sensitive the problem is that whenever there is a dns resolution it has to go back through the vpn tunnel and then to the on prem active directory and the dns server and now the traffic is leaving the azure and going to on prem and and there are multiple hops involved so sometimes it add latency in the case of few servers and for that reason it's recommended to create active directory servers addds servers in azure only so you are creating two active directory servers now where should we create them so there will be a different subscription for them where there will be a vnet and the different subnets created and this subscription is called as identity subscription so this is an identity subscription where there are active directory domain servers and dns servers configured and they are in the direct sync with on prem adds servers now if you have virtual network and you want all the traffic to be going through hub subscription then we have to create a vnet peering so there will be a vnet peering so that means if a1 wants the dns resolution against a2 based on the name then it will go through azure firewall and through azure firewall which is in hub subscription 
it will go to identity subscription resolve the name and then a1 can reach to a2 using the name itself so now we have identity subscription hub subscription non prod and prod subscription now we want some management to be done so let's have another subscription let's call it as management subscription so what happens in this management subscription we have log analytics workspace we have automation account so now all the diagnostic settings which are configured on the different resources like virtual machine firewall vpn gateway or any other resource which is created in azure we want all the logs to be flowing to log analytics workspace from everywhere because we want to manage them centrally now if we want to troubleshoot something we'll just go to this log analytics workspace and filter the logs and we'll have a log centrally available in the management subscription and now using the automation account we can manage the automation too like you have created a run box which will shut down the virtual machine in the non prod subscription during the off business hours so you create different run books and using this run books you can connect to different subscriptions so you are connecting to non prod subscription virtual machine through automation account if you want to make some changes to the product subscription you can do it too so this is like a centralized management subscription from where you can manage the logs as well as the automation so now there is one hub subscription and four different spoke subscriptions and based on the microsoft provided landing zone these three subscriptions identity management and connectivity subscription which is hub subscription are part of the platform management group which means these three subscriptions are part of infrastructure team however the other subscription you can create multiple these two subscription for now non prod and prod subscription where the actual business resources are lying these are under landing zone management group you can create multiple subscription based on your requirement and those subscriptions will be connecting directly to the hub subscription and there will not be a direct connectivity between any spoke networks one last thing which i forgot is the connectivity if you want to connect to the virtual machine you need a vpn connectivity if you have a vpn connectivity on prem then you can easily use it through the vpn gateway and then connect to the azure however there is another service called as bastion service which you can deploy in the hub subscription and using this bastion service you can connect to any virtual machine in your spoke subscription using your browser itself so you have to log into the azure portal and when you'll go to the virtual machine there is an option to connect using the bastion there are certain configurations of the user defined routes have to be configured and once that is done you can use the bastion to connect to any virtual machine and these resources in the hub subscription are mostly using the public ip like firewall will have a public ip if it's a public firewall bastion service will use a public ip because if you want to connect to the virtual machine you need a public ip like a jump box vpn gateway will have a public ip because the public ip of vpn gateway will connect to the public ip of on prem firewall one last thing which you can do is either create a online subscription however i've seen the enterprises do not create an online subscription where they have online resources for non prod and prod subscription they just create different resources like an application gateway i'm talking about application gateway is a layer 7 load balancer which also provides which also provide the web access firewall features either you can have a shared subscription which is like an online subscription and create these resources there or create these resources like one for prod subscription which will be separate from the non prod subscription application gateway because it's always recommended keep your non production and production resources separate 
because in non production you make frequent changes and you try new things but the production environment should be stable and should only be updated when the testing has already been done in the non production environment so that's all for the network architecture however there are a few things which i want to show using the network architecture diagram provided by microsoft and there is a management group structure which has to be followed and the subscription will lie under that specific management group and the benefit of using management group is that you can apply the azure policies and what is azure policy it's it's a governance policy like for example if you want to make sure that none of the virtual machine created in the non pod subscription as well as the pod subscription should have a public ip then you can assign the azure policy that public ip is not allowed into the landing zone management group which will make sure that the public ip is not created in these subscriptions and there are a lot of different policies which you can apply and that is for your governance and security so as you can see on your screen this is the management group structure first you will use your organization name like contoso then you create three different management groups platform as i have already explained it has management identity and connectivity management group and there will be in the management there will be management subscription where there will be automation account log analytics workspace identity subscription where there will be domain controllers and the dns server and the connectivity subscription for for azure firewall and the vpn connections and then the different landing zone subscription where you will have your business resources and you can see all the subscriptions have the governance applied using the policy assignment network watcher you can apply the defender for cloud role assignment and the and the cost management because if you will apply all the azure policies or any management or governance on the management group level then all the underlying resources will inherit those policies so i'll provide the link of hub and spoke enterprise scale landing zone diagram in the description of this video and that's all i wanted to show in this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much